All right, welcome back to electrochemistry. In part two of this unit, we are going to be analyzing redox reactions and looking at the reduction potential chart. This will be another um, review unit from what we did in reactions earlier in the year. But earlier in the year, we used the activity series instead of the reduction potential chart. So we're going to be talking about the difference between the activity series and reduction potential chart and using the reduction potential chart instead of the activity series. But let's just go ahead and get started and see what we're talking about. So first of all, we have a reaction. I know that this is a redox reaction because I know the charges change from the left to the right. And I know the charges change because I know how to assign oxidation numbers like we did in our last video. So first thing I'm going to do is assign oxidation numbers. I see that there's a potassium, and he's all by himself, which means he has an oxidation number of zero, which is not pretty, so I'm trying again. Ooh, there it is. And I also see magnesium on the right, all by himself. He has an oxidation number of zero. Now, when they're in a compound, that's something totally different. So magnesium on the right, uh, sorry, left, is a plus two because he is an alkaline earth metal, and potassium is a plus one because he's an alkaline metal. And then... You could look at the sulfur and oxygen individually, but since there's a sulfate on the left and a sulfate on the right, you can also just look at them as a group. This wouldn't be the case if you had a sulfate on the left and a sulfite on the right, then you would need to look at them individually. But as a group, sulfate is a negative two over here and a negative two over there. And so that's all of our oxidation numbers. Now we wanna know which thing is being oxidized for the oxidation half reaction. So remember that oxidation is loss of electrons, gain in charge. So the thing that's gaining in charge is gonna be your potassium because it's going from K0 to K plus. So potassium is the thing that is oxidized. For reduction, reduction is gain of electrons loss in charge. And so that's going to be magnesium because it's going from a plus two to zero. So the charge is getting smaller. Now when we want to look at the half reactions, we're looking at the half that deals with the thing that we want. So for the oxidation half reaction, I have K0 turning into K2 plus. But that's a little bit misleading um, because it's not really K2 plus. So the thing is, there's a four behind the sulfate because the identity of sulfate is something with a sulfur and four oxygens. That four will always be there if you have sulfate. But the two behind the potassium has nothing to do with the identity of potassium. The two is there to balance out the charges. You need two plus ones to cancel out the one minus two. So since that two is there for charges only and not because of the identity of potassium, it no longer stays behind it because it's not a diatomic molecule. Instead, it goes in front. But when you put that 2 or that 2K in front, then we need 2Ks on the left. And that means we need 2 electrons to balance out the charges. So that's our oxidation half reaction. For the reduction half reaction, we have Mg plus 2 turning into Mg. Notice that I'm totally leaving out the sulfate. The sulfate's not really participating in this reaction. I also need two electrons, and those are going to go on the left to balance out the charges. Reduction always has electrons on the left. And then add the half reactions together. Two electrons cancel out on each side. What's left over is 2K0 plus Mg plus 2. Makes 2K plus plus Mg0. If you want to not include these zeros, that's totally fine. The zeros are optional, but it is not optional to include the plus signs. An Mg plus 2 is a clear liquidy solution, an aqueous solution. But an Mg0 is a silver-colored metal. And so you can't get this aqueous solution confused with this silvery-colored metal. They are two completely different things, so make sure when you need a charge, you have a charge. All right, last thing is the substance that is oxidized, that is K or K0. The substance that is reduced, that is Mg plus 2, do not forget the plus 2. And your spectator ion, that's the thing that's not really participating, that is your sulfate, SO4 minus 2. Again, don't forget the charge. 
Let's analyze another one. We've got AgNO3 plus Al. So that is Al NO3 3 plus Ag. If you want to balance the equation here, you're totally welcome to. It doesn't matter really. We're going to get that balancing later on anyway. So now we're going to assign oxidation numbers so that we can figure out who's being oxidized and reduced. Since there's a nitrate on both sides, you can look at nitrate as an entire group. It's a minus one. It always is a minus one. That's just the identity of nitrate. Aluminum by itself is zero. Silver by itself is zero. Silver in a group has to be plus one because nitrate's minus one and there's one of each. Aluminum has to be plus three because nitrate's minus one and there's three of them. So the substance that is oxidized, oxidation is loss of electrons, gain in charge. That'd be aluminum because it's going from zero to plus three. Reduction is gain of electrons loss in charge. That'd be the silver because it's going from plus one to zero. And so that kind of leaves the nitrate as your spectator ion. I'm going to go ahead and add that in down here, which means the nitrate's not really involved anywhere else. It's just watching. So the oxidation half reaction is the half that deals with oxidation, only the half that deals with oxidation. So that is Al0 turning into Al plus 3. And my three electrons are going to go on the right-hand side on oxidation. My reduction half reaction is Ag plus, plus an electron, turns into Ag. And if you wanted to add those half reactions together, notice that I have three electrons here and only one electron there. So I'm going to need to multiply this bottom equation by three. If you had previously balanced your equation, you already noticed that three. And so you would have already put the three silvers on the left and the three silvers on the right and makes everything balance. The electrons cancel. What's left over is Al0 plus 3Ag plus. Turns into Al plus 3 plus 3Ag. The substance oxidized is the Al0. The substance reduced is the Ag plus. These substances, oxidized and reduced, always come from the reactant side or the left-hand side of the equation. And that's it. That's how we're going to analyze a redox reaction. Next thing we're going to look at is the reduction potential chart. So this is very similar to the activity series that we had earlier in the year when we were doing reactions. Except that these are all written as reduction reactions. So notice that the electrons are on the left on every single one of these. And the voltages here are how many volts it would contribute to a battery. Each of these things would contribute to a battery if they were the thing that was reduced in the battery. So that means that silver will contribute a positive 0.8 volts to a battery if it were the thing reduced in a battery, whereas zinc would take away 0.76 volts in a battery if it was the thing that was being reduced. All right, so let me erase this. Okay, so the next thing you need to know is the thing that's highest up on this list, so in this case, uh, the silver, that is the more likely to be reduced most easily reduced. And the way I remember that is because this thing is very close to the title, so the title is reduction potential, so that's the thing that wants to be reduced. If you want the thing that's oxidized, you're going to have to look at the reaction going backwards. So that'd be lithium is the most easily oxidized. The higher you are up on the list, the more easily you are reduced. That is the reaction going forward the way it's written. If you want oxidation, you have to reverse the reaction. So you're looking for the thing on the right-hand side and at the bottom of the list. That's most easily oxidized. The activity series was different, although the same but different. It listed metals just in order, Li, Zn, Cu, Ag, and the one that was highest up on the list was most active, and so the most the one most likely to be oxidized, and the one that was lower on the list is the most is the least active and the one most likely to be reduced. So now we're doing the same thing as we had before, 
except that we're putting a voltage with it and we've got the whole list written upside down. Okay, I'm going to erase this. And let's go ahead and work some problems with just these four from your reduction potential chart. So which substance just of these four is the most easily reduced? Okay, remember we said the most easily reduced is the highest up on the list, so that's going to be my Ag+. Plus. Which substance will lose electrons most easily? So oxidation is loss of electrons. That's the thing most easily oxidized. So we're looking at the bottom of the list. But not the Li+, plus. instead it'll be the plain Li. That's the thing on the right hand side because oxidation is making a reaction go reversed, not making a reaction go forward. And then which one will cause the reduction of Zn plus two? which means it's going to make this reaction, the Zn plus 2 reaction, be reduced. So it's going to make this reaction go forward. So we need something that's going to go reverse. And the thing that's going to be re reverse is oxidation, and oxidation is lower down on the list, so that again is going to be Li, the thing that's going to cause the reduction of Zn plus 2. Three more, which will cause the oxidation of copper. So oxidation remember, is making a reaction go reverse because all of these are reduction reactions. And so you're looking for the thing that will be reduced so that copper can be oxidized. So that's going to be the one that's higher than the copper and going forward, the Ag+. Plus. Uh, which thing is the most easily oxidized? Remember, oxidized is at the bottom of the list on the right-hand side. That's the plain Li. And which thing will gain electrons most easily? Reduction is gain of electrons, loss in charge, so that would be the thing that's most likely to be reduced, Ag+. Plus. Let's look at the reduction potential for a couple of other things. Will silver dissolve in copper plus 2 solution? So remember silver is Ag, not Ag+, plus, just Ag. And copper plus 2 is Cu plus 2. So we want to know, is this reaction spontaneous? Will silver dissolve in Cu plus 2 solution? So silver, that's the plain Ag. Cu plus 2, that's obviously the Cu plus 2. So we want the copper reaction to go backwards and this, uh, sorry, the copper reaction to go forwards and the silver reaction to go backwards. Will this happen? No, this will not happen. The thing that's higher up on the list is the thing that should be reduced, not the thing that should be oxidized. Is this reaction spontaneous? No. If you want to look at it another way, look at the voltages. If you're going to make the silver reaction go backwards, you know, that's a negative 0.8. It'll contribute a negative 0.8 to a battery. And the copper going forwards will contribute at positive 0.34. Negative 0.8 plus positive 0.34 is negative 0.46 volts, which means this battery would require 0.46 volts to work rather than give off 0.46 volts. So no, it's not going to happen. What about can you store lithium nitrate, Li+, plus, in a copper container? That's Cu0. Is it spontaneous? Will the reaction work? So we've got Li+, plus, that's this lithium, and copper container Cu0, that's that reaction. So we want the lithium to go forwards, the copper to go reverse. Is this reaction spontaneous? No. It is non-spontaneous. Because the copper, since it's higher up on the list, is the one that should be reduced, not oxidized. So this is a non-spontaneous reaction. But the question is, can you store it? So if you store it, nothing will happen. So can you store it? Yes, actually you can, because the reaction will do nothing. How about two more? Will zinc, Zn0, be oxidized by copper nitrate, Cu plus 2? Is this reaction spontaneous? Zn0, Cu plus 2. So we're going to try to get the higher one to go forwards and the bottom one to go reverse. Is this reaction going to happen? Yes, this reaction will happen. It is spontaneous because the higher one on the list, that is copper, is being reduced. The lower one on the list, that is zinc, is being oxidized. So yes, zinc will be oxidized by copper nitrate. 
Next we have, will copper plus 2 solution be reduced, I put a plus there, it should have, an arrow should have been a plus, by zinc. Is this reaction spontaneous? So this time we have copper plus 2 and plain zinc, and we want the copper to be going forward and the zinc to be going reverse. Have you noticed this is the exact same situation as we had before? Yes, this reaction is spontaneous. Copper is the one that's going to be reduced because it's higher on the list. Zinc is the one that's going to be oxidized because it's lower on the list. These are two different ways to say the exact same thing. All right, so that's your reduction potential chart. You're going to actually get a reduction potential chart in class that has probably 50 different elements on it. But whether you have 50 elements or four elements, the reduction potential charts work the same way. Okay, that's electrochemistry. We'll see you again next time.